The video describes the endosonographic examination of the papilla and the biliary system. Basically, there are three positions to evaluate the biliary system. 1. A position at the level of the papilla. 2. A position at the apex of the duodenal bulb. And 3. A gastral position within the transducer in close contact to the smaller curvature. Longitudinal EUS of the biliary tract starts in the second part of the duodenum. Having straightened the echo endoscope, as usual in endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, ERCP, close contact is established between the transducer and the papilla. The scope is withdrawn very slowly until the hypoechoic triangular papilla is visualized. In most cases, the pancreatic duct will appear first. Very gentle counterclockwise rotation will bring a longitudinal section of the distal bile duct into focus. Here we see the endosonographic image with the hypoechoic papilla, the pancreatic duct, which is distant to the transducer, and the distal bile duct, which is close to the transducer. At the left side of the image, air-filled structures of the third part of the duodenum can be seen. Close contact to the duodenal wall and very slow, cautious and gentle movements of the scope are key to stay close to the ductal structures. Here we see a case with somewhat slimmer ducts. The distal bile duct runs close to the transducer and very gentle withdrawal combined with gradual counterclockwise torque of the shaft of the scope enables us to follow its course and to achieve a longitudinal section of the bile duct. In this third example case, the slim pancreatic duct branches near the slender oval papilla. We follow the course of the bile duct by pulling the scope while slightly moving it counterclockwise. At the right-hand side of the screen, we see the transducer retracting the pyloric sphincter. Therefore, the transducer is now in the duodenal bulb visualizing the more central part of the common bile duct. By further withdrawing the scope, it will slip into the stomach. In the gastric antrum, we get an excellent view on the structures of the liver hilum with the common hepatic duct, the extrahepatic portal vein, the common hepatic artery, and the, and the normal lymph nodes of the liver hilum. Color-coded duplex scanning facilitates correct identification of these anatomical structures. From the upper stomach, we examine the left and parts of the right liver lobe. The triad of Gleason is finely depicted, including the intrahepatic branches of the portal vein and hepatic artery and the fine anechoic intrahepatic bile ducts. Now we examine the bile ducts using a radial scanning echoendoscope. Again we start at a position perpendicular to the papilla. The pancreatic duct runs away from the transducer through the pancreatic head. The course of the bile duct is directed onto the liver hilum at the left side of the screen. The radial scanner is located in the descending duodenum. Air is aspirated and the scope slowly pulled back until it is in a straight position. Then the balloon may be slightly inflated. Very cautious forward and backward movements of the scope are necessary to focus the transducer to the papilla. The distal bile duct near the transducer, as well as the pancreatic duct distant to the transducer, appear in a cross or oblique section. In most cases, the second position at the apex of the duodenal bulb will guarantee a very good longitudinal overview of the common bile duct from the papilla to the liver hilum. The water-filled balloon prevents slipping back into the stomach.
Gentle clockwise rotation combined with minimal advancement of the shaft of the scope opens the view onto the distal bile duct and the papilla. Counterclockwise torque and a slight pull of the scope allows visualization of the liver hilum and the gallbladder. Liver hilum is best imaged from the duodenal bulb or the distal stomach. The common bile duct runs from the liver hilum at the right side of the screen in the direction of the papilla and is accompanied by the extrahepatic part of the portal vein. Cross and oblique sections of the common hepatic artery are provided between the tubular structures of the common bile duct and the portal vein. The gallbladder is best examined using the radial scanning echoendoscope. However, when the longitudinal scope is positioned in the distal stomach, usually gallbladder is visualized. Using the radial scanning echoendoscope, in almost all cases, complete examination of the gallbladder can be achieved from positions in the duodenal bulb or in the distal stomach. The hyster valves are clearly delineated. Juxtapapillary duodenal diverticulum may impede the evaluation of the papilla and the distal common bile duct. Due to hyperechoic artifacts, complete longitudinal imaging of the distal pancreatic and bile duct is difficult. Filling the duodenal lumen with water may overcome this problem. The arrows mark the neck of the water-filled juxtapapillary diverticulum. A similar situation is encountered in this case of radial ultrasonography of the bile duct. Again, the examiner is confronted with hyperechoic artifacts near the papilla. The diameter of the distal bile duct is bordering the accepted upper limit. Now the duodenal lumen is filled with water. The airborne artifacts disappear. The water-filled diverticulum and the anechoic bile duct are now optimally delineated. Slight dilatation of the common bile duct and sometimes of the pancreatic duct is a common finding in older patients, in particular several years after cholecystectomy. The papilla is finely delineated without any suspicion of tumor or bile duct stone. The most common cause of benign stenosis of the papilla is adenomyomatous hyperplasia, which can be proven by performing biopsy after endoscopic sphincterotomy. In this case, dilatation of the common bile duct is more pronounced. Careful inspection of the papilla and the ampullary region of the pancreatic head is needed to exclude malignancy or a small impacted stone. By slowly retracting the scope and gradually turning the shaft counterclockwise, we follow the course of the bile duct from the slightly prominent but otherwise normal papilla to the liver hilum. Color-coded duplex scanning helps to differentiate the dilated common hepatic duct from the portal vein and the hepatic artery. This case again shows substantial dilatation of the bile duct in a patient 20 years after cholecystectomy suffering from recurrent attacks of upper abdominal pain. Using a radial scanning echoendoscope, the papilla is very well imaged. Careful examination detects neither a tumor nor stones.
contractions of the muscles of the major papilla may be observed. Endoscopic sphincterotomy and biopsy of the papilla are performed, showing a typical finding of adenomyomatosis. Please keep in mind, one, examination of the papilla and the bile duct may be performed with both the radial scanning and the longitudinal scanning echoendoscope. Gallbladder is better visualized with the radial scope. Two, for both types of instruments, we use three defined positions in the descending duodenum, in the duodenal bulb, and in the distal stomach. Three, examination techniques differ between radial and longitudinal endosonography. Four, Possible pitfalls may result from air-filled juxtapapillary diverticulum. 5. Benign stenosis of the bile duct is a frequent in older patients.